Hello, internet friends and family. It's me, Prepper Russ. I'm here to talk about making your own homemade first aid kit for your house or your vehicle. Because those pre-made ones you can buy online or at the department stores, they don't have enough stuff in them. So let's dig in and see everything you should have in your first aid kit. So here we go. My lawyer told me that I have to give a disclaimer that I am not a doctor or trained in the medical industry whatsoever. Even though I have a lot of prepper friends and EMT friends, even a hazmat friend, but that doesn't qualify me. Even though I do play a doctor on my videos, um, if you die from using any of this stuff, it's not my fault, okay? Let's move on. The first thing is the companion to your first aid is have a nice good first aid manual. This is mainly for the trauma stuff, right? The stuff where you don't know how to resuscitate somebody or, you know, they got shocked or they're choking or something. And like put a little tabs on those big main ones in here because you're going to want a reference book like, what do I do? And you need information real quick. I like this book because it has lots of pictures and techniques and it shows you how to save choking babies and applied stuff like that, right? So get that, read up on it, keep it next to your uh, first aid kit. Let's open it up, kids. I like this box because it's one of those like sturdy boxes, you can't really squish it. But anyway. This is about the right size for me. The first thing you see here is stop the bleeding. Because usually what kills people really quick is if you have an artery or like something like that bleeding out, like grab this and shove it in there as quick as you can. Stop the bleeding. All right, it's just a reminder. That's the first thing you do. I'm not going to go through this in any particular order because it's all just kind of crammed in there anyway. So let's just start with the what's on top. Okay, thermometer. Now this is basic first aid. And I'm gonna tell you too, like this thing is first aid for boo-boos, a medium first aid, heavy first aid, trauma. I got everything in here. So like uh, thermometer, I like the electric ones. Make sure you always have extra batteries though because this one gives you a really fast temperature gauge right off the bat. Got my headlamp. Because when you're working on somebody and it's like dark or something, you're going to want a good light, but you're going to want both your hands free so you can work on them, right? I love this one because it's broad spectrum and it's like mostly for close up to medium close up work. Rechargeable and um, lasts for like two hours on super high, right? Uh, tourniquet, probably the best thing to have in your uh, first aid trauma kit. Um, right. So once again, read up on how to use these. I'm not going to tell you, but these are real lifesavers because if you got an artery that's like, you know, punctured or squirting out, right. You only got about 90 seconds to live to, and you got to shut off that freaking artery as quick as you can. And these rapid tourniquets are my favorite for that. This is just regular uh, tape, right? What do they call it? It's like band-aid tape. It's for wrapping wounds and stuff. Super sticky, got a compression bandage here, right? Good for bleeding and all that stuff again, right? It's, it's, it acts as a soft tourniquet, right? But always have your tourniquet because this works better. All right, I got an eye wash kit because, uh, you know, um, this is nice to have. I mean, yes, you could just stick your head under the, the sink or something, if you wanted to flush out something in somebody's eyes, like chemicals or whatever. But I like this because it's squirty and you could really squirt it in somebody's eye. But it's um saline solution, right? So it's always purified. I never have to worry about if I just grab a cup of an old cup on the counter that's got some water and throw it in your eye. It might be all dirty and give you an infection. This stuff is for boo-boos. It's that new skin stuff. It's basically like super glue. You just put it on a cut. Uh, this is a little mini plunger. This is good for like getting stuff out of your ear or you could even squirt some saline up your nose or something or, you know, or for your eye. Once again, I figured that, you know, they're fun too the squeeze. Uh, hemostats. These are big. These are good for like, once again, big cut artery. If you can reach up there and see that artery and clamp it off, man, you just saved your life. I got a second one here too, just as a backup. Cause sometimes you might need one to kind of really pull that skin back. And then get in there so you can get in there and find that, that squirting artery. 
shut it off. That's what they did in the war. That's how most people got their life saved. Uh, basic first aid. Everybody knows what that is. Triple ointment uh, antibacteria. I got this little thing with pills in it. So let me just tell you, and I even tell you what it's for right there, right? Chest pain, two aspirin, food poisoning, four charcoal. So over-the-counter stuff is like, there's not a whole lot of stuff you can buy that's, that could possibly save your life in a traumatic event. But you can get this stuff, which is aspirin is good for like heart attacks. Just throw one or two in their mouth, tell them to chew and swallow. And then I got these um, high mega dose charcoal pills i think they're like a thousand milligrams each or something but i would have like if you got food poisoning i'd be like here swallow about five of these and it's not it might not save your life but it's going to help until you get to the hospital and then they really give you the good stuff and pump your stomach this is just a, a pulse oximeter it tells you your uh what your uh, pulse rate is and stuff i like to have this a lot for use this with your tourniquet so you got a bleeding artery, right? You want to make sure you're shutting that artery up when you apply that tourniquet. And this will show you, like if I applied it to my arm, and you can put it on people's toes too. It'll show the heart rate going down to know if you need to tighten your tourniquet more or not. And you cut off the blood supply. Um, that also shows your oxygen and your blood levels too. Um, once again, read up on these, right? Always YouTube and read up on everything so you know how to use them for their maximum potential. I got this thing, it's just kind of a squirter. Like you can like maybe, if someone's bleeding and stuff, you need, you just put some water in there to really kind of squirt out some of the blood or debris. So you could get in there with your hemostat. So, cause you gotta be able to see that artery so you can clamp it off. So I kind of like having something that just squirts water like that. Once again, this could also work as an eye flush or put it in, in your nose too, right? I got uh, these Dex 4s. These are glucose tabs, right? These are good for like diabetics when they have a diabetic crash, um, which I am a uh, type two diabetic. And it's like sometimes when your blood sugar just drops, you feel really freaking weird. And um, sometimes you can pass out. So these are like pure glucose, which means your body doesn't have to break them down. Like if you just ate sugar, your body has to spend some time breaking that sugar down into glucose. Whereas this instantly hits your body as glucose and um, it really helps like uh, low blood sugar crashes. I, I keep like three or four of these around the house. And you just eat one. They just taste like candy, right? You just chew them up and good to go. Oh, I need more. I only got half in there. What happened? <laughs> God, I'll open this thing up and did this video. All right. This is a um, nose trumpet. Uh, read up on these. Like um, it's for if someone's choking or something or maybe the got stung by a bee and their throat swelled up and they can't breathe you shove this down their nose so it gives them some air to their airway it also comes with a little saline pack grease it up so it slides down in their nose and boom save a life got these big nice scissors man because these are like good if you know someone's cut or something or else they got a burn you got to get the clothes off of them and these cut through clothes like scissors through clothes Got some uh, gloves. Um, honestly, if I'm working on my wife in the house or the cats, I wouldn't even bother with these because these are for your protection. These are for, you know, contamination and all that. And you would want to bust these out if you had a friend over or a cousin that you weren't so sure about them. Maybe they got some bloodborne disease or something. So that's for protecting yourself there. Got a condom in here. Trust me, this uh, it's not a whoops thing. Um, these are good for like if you cut your finger real bad or something, you can wrap, put a condom around it and just kind of put a rubber band on it. And it's going to help from like, you know, getting the blood splattered all over the place. That's really kind of for a boo-boo. And if you're going to use these, make sure you get non-lubricated because you don't need lubrication for your pleasure. This is just for helping. Um, I got this little thing. I actually took this from the doctor. So I was at the doctor and I had some blood work done. And I was like, man, I like these big rubber band things because these are good for acting as like little mini tourniquets for like your fingers, your digits, right? You just wrap out around there real tight and boom, you just got a tourniquet for that. And they were 
they didn't freak out too much when I say, hey, can I keep that? And they were like, sure. I was like, I'm going to throw it in my first aid kit and make a video. So, hi, doctor's office, if you're watching this. Thanks for the free rubber band, even though my insurance probably paid like uh, 20 bucks for that. Alcohol pads, all right, we know what those are good for, just wiping off wounds. Um, just, you know, before you put band-aids on them or whatever. Honestly, I've watched so many things about what you should put on wounds whether it be perox, hold on, I got, so I got this, uh, what's this stuff called again? I forget. Damn it. Now I'm acting stupid. So I got this iodine. That's what it is. So I read up, like, what's the best thing to put on the wound before you kind of bandage it up? Is it iodine? And this is really the best iodine to get. Uh, you can maybe zoom in and see the percentage or whatever. Anyhow, um, you just kind of crush this thing. You flip it around, you put it in here, you crush it, and then this cotton swab's there, and you just wipe it on stuff. Obviously, this is for small wounds. But let me get back to the point here. Alcohol, is that best? Um, iodine, is that best? Triple M box solution. Do you know what I found out was the best thing to do if you have a wound, just like a laceration or something? Soap and water. They say soap and water is the best thing to just clean it out real good, right? Because there's no, like, harmful residues. There's no damaging chemicals. I know, number one, uh, hydrogen peroxide is the worst. They say never use that because it kills cells, right? And it, it hurts the healing process. So does alcohol. And I don't think this stuff does, but it, apparently it burns like a mother. So, um, and then they say this stuff is like, eh, it's okay. But then some people were allergic to some of these ingredients. So I'm like, what the hell, man? I got them all. Because I know I'm not allergic to any of them and all that. But soap and water is what they say. Band-aids. Get every kind of band-aid you can get, right? The really big ones and the really small ones and all that stuff. That Honestly, I the most thing I do with this kit is use band-aids, which most people do. I got these little tape steri strips. They're for, like, uh, clothes and skin up. They're like a heavy-duty band-aid. Got a bunch of little ones, big ones. And then I also have a suture kit, which there's a needle and thread in here, and it's all, uh, like, sterile, I think. I thought it said sterilized. Whatever. It is. And I got an ABD pad, which ladies know what that is. But this, these are good because they have that stuff, absorbent stuff in there for soaking up blood. So that's for, like, kind of a medium wound that's bleeding. But not super bad, so that's just nice to have. Plus, you can even just cut these and make little, like, field bandages if you want to. Clotting sponge. This is a big one. So this is for, like, heavy bleeding. You just open this sponge up, and it has anti-clotting fluids in there. Or material. I don't know what it is. Granules, I think. And then you just shove it into a wound that tells you how to do it. You just shove it in there, right? And then, um, then you would take this pressure. You want to... It's always... You got to pressurize. So this thing shoved into a wound with wrapping this on here, you're, you're good to go. And we're almost done. I got burn fix. This is first aid dressing. Takes the burn out. It's really for pain relief. It doesn't really do anything to help um, the healing process. Because unfortunately burns, they don't really make anything that actually helps the burn heal or anything. But it's sterilized, so you don't have to worry about like, causing an infection while you're trying to help with uh, with um, you know the antiseptic properties of this thing and once again remember this is just for first and second degree burns you would never slap that on a third degree burn because there's really nothing you can do for a third degree burn tweezers for you know splinters and stuff like that and then I also have this little ammonia um, snapper thing right you just crack it and it smells terrible you whip, put it on somebody's nose to wake them up and then i got two of these little um these are just little um blood stopping granules in, in each one of these right and these are for smaller wounds and you just kind of shove it in a wound it helps clot up the uh, bleeding cuts last thing i got is like a little hypodermic needle um and this is kind of i got this in case maybe somebody comes over and they take insulin or something or whatever, and oh, they forgot their needle, right? Well, I got one for them if they need that, right? So, anyway, that's all, kids.
So I went through the grueling process of putting everything in this bag into the comment section below so you can find it and buy it yourself. I'm Prepper Russ, I guess. <laughs>